Hello, 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 kids. Uh, we're back um, with another episode of VGF Strat Corner podcast. Um, World sexy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, keeping keeping the train going, keeping it alive. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, before we even get started, uh, this episode uh, is Devil Gen, but uh, I, I got to call somebody out. And uh, I'm going to call out Steph, a.k.a. Sushi, a.k.a. the Ageless One. Because uh, just for those who don't know her, uh, how I don't know, because uh, she's been a mod on TZ since... Uh, and she rules. Yeah. Since TZ was born, she's been on those forums. So uh, I don't know how you don't know her, but in case you don't, uh, her her game was Tech and Tag, and she played Tech and Tag a lot. She was like one of the best female gamers at that time. She was in magazine articles and shit, blah blah blah. She was a big deal. Just gonna say, but uh, she kind of stopped uh, Tech and Four. Just kind of ruined Tech and Four, and uh, she stopped playing. Uh, and she played a little bit in T5. Cause they kind of She'd be one of my favorite people ever if it wasn't for that, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she kind of picked up T5 a little bit, uh, played Marduk, I believe, if I remember correctly, because uh, T5 went back to the sort of tag-ish system. Um, so she picked up that a little bit, but didn't play it too much, then kind of dropped it, oh, hasn't played T6, blah, blah, blah. And uh, other than just kind of trolling the board stuff, she doesn't really do a whole bunch with the gaming thing. But uh, she's a personality, and we love personalities on this show. We love we love having people that we love on the show. And I mean, take Ogre for example. I mean, he he said you know he plays played T six a little bit, but you know there's no scene in San Diego, so you know we just have him on because it's it's Ogre. Why would you not have Ogre? On? God, that was really good for me too. Yeah, it was <laughs> having having him on. But uh, the kid kills me. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty fucking awesome. But uh, so is Steph, and she declined our podcast episode. I don't know how. I don't know why, but I'm calling her out in front of everybody so you guys can troll her and tell her that she should have should have got on or that she should get on and she can pick her character. I don't even care which character she picks. But. Why are you no on my PCAST, it, huh? Exactly. That's, that's what I was saying. But, but it happens. Hopefully we, uh, we can pull her out of the dark uh, once uh, Tag 2 comes along so so look forward to that uh tag assist sushi yeah <laughs> exactly uh so that'll, that'll be really fun when we get to those podcasts and we can start doing tag too uh, that'll be when shit gets really 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 real so we're just sneak previewing for you like yeah, yeah. months in advance <laughs> months and months in advance but we got some cool shit on the way so i'm excited so let, let's do this uh this devil gen character then uh, you know, uh, you started this podcast off talking about trains or whatever. You know what the first image was in my head? What's that? Do you remember the Godfather from wrestling? Wrestling? <laughs> and he had, yeah, from like WWF. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And he had the hoe train move. Oh, my. <laughs> That's what I pictured. I pictured you doing the hoe train move. <laughs> Good. I should get a picture up on the side of, of me in, in doing the hoe train. <laughs> God, but, uh, that guy was awful. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot awful with wrestling. Well, there's a lot still awful with wrestling. So He was like one of those guys who would try to wrestle, and it would be like girls trying to do cartwheels. You know, they would just like barely hop over a crack in the street. <laughs> would actually do a fucking cartwheel. Oh, wow. That was a round-off. What are you talking about? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a bunch of random imagery we have <laughs> rolling around in our, in our noggins. I don't know where the fuck we come up with this stuff, but I actually had somebody tell me the other day that uh, last night, in fact, that um, a friend of mine that I just uh, uh, kind of see every once in a while, uh, as she was saying, her boss, uh, who's like thirty something, had never seen Star Wars or anything like that, which is okay, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know an how achievement you, actually. Yeah, I don't know how you've never seen the Star Wars, even if you don't like Star Wars, you've still seen them. But had never seen the original Star Wars and uh, did not know what Captain, who Captain Kirk was from. Did, didn't know that character. Did you just do that? <laughs> did I just do what? He didn't know what Captain Kirk was from? Yeah, he, he didn't. Had no idea where that character was from. And I don't mean, like, where the character was born or anything. I mean, like, what uh, <laughs> series and stuff that, that Captain Kirk was in. And what's Captain Kirk on? 
Star what what Star Trek what I don't thank you are you trying to troll me <laughs> what, what the hell are you doing I'm, I'm like are you saying Captain Kirk's on Star Wars <laughs> no 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 just, just the the reference you know like he didn't know that uh, didn't even know who played Captain Kirk I was like what okay now that just pissing me yeah, off yeah I, I was like this this guy is a huge social fail I just shattered in my pants exactly see that's what I'm saying I'm like uh. And I'm not even saying anything bad about Star Wars, but I mean, if you make it 30 years and you've never seen Star Wars, no, fuck that. You just don't see yeah. Star Wars. But yeah, and just I, shove it in everyone's face. I, I've never seen it. <laughs> and I can understand, like, not knowing who Captain Kirk is if, like, you're 16, you know, and you're in high school and you're part of the fucking uh, Twilight age, you know. Like, I, I can understand you being dumb enough not to know who who William Shatner is. And all this other garbage, but you're this dude's like thirty seven or some shit. Like what? <laughs> what a fucking lame. Anyway, that, oh, no, enough of this rant. He's thirty seven. That's even older still. Hey, but around then, they didn't even have good movies. All they had was Star Wars. I know. Yeah. What was the thirty seven from this year? Would have been what seventy four? Is that right? No. Yeah, that's right. I'm not. I'm not even gonna start my math brain. Yeah, it's seventy four. So you figure. <laughs> Uh, 74, that was, like, around when the first Star Trek came out. Because what... God, uh, gotta, gotta crush my brain for my movie knowledge. I want to say that that movie came out, like, 72? Something like that? I may have to I'm it during the this <laughs> podcast. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get off uh, that, that topic. Let's talk some fucking devil gin. Okay. Right. Can we do that? Right. Can we do that? You ready? I guess so, but Priceline. <laughs> I know. I you gotta watch out for that. for the big deal. Um, I love Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, so Devil Jin. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. Shatner would make a great Devil Jin. Yes, he he would make a great a movie. Devil Jin, and he he. I mean, you know what? That's like the real life version of Jin Devil Jin. You have him, and then you have the evil twin. You know, so. Oh my God! You just blew my mind. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know the big. There is the big. There is brain <laughs> semen all over the inside of my skull. The big deal is trying to save you money, but evil twin is trying to make you spend money. So. <laughs> oh God! Uh, I just spent eight thousand dollars on a ticket to Delaware. All right, so damn you, Shatner! <laughs> all right, Dan. So I'm going to make you uh, kick it off a little bit. Uh, so we usually have you know the little snippet. I'm going to make you give me your little summary of Devil Jin. Give it to me. My summary? Yes. Uh, he sucks. <laughs> and I know that is totally unpopular to love Devil Just because people love Mishimas, and then, you know, people love to argue characters that aren't as good or whatever, and, oh, he is good, or, you know. But, seriously, the game is just balanced, and you can make a case for Devil Jin, but he sucks. Okay, so give me some specifics. Well, what what uh, areas of his game do you not like? I don't like his lows. Let's let's just start with that. <laughs> uh, Hell sweep not knocking down anymore, except on like counter hit or whatever. That fucking sucks. <laughs> See, I'm actually I actually like that hell sweep. I still Heihachi's hell sweep is my fave. I love that hell sweep, even though you essentially and we've talked about this when we talked about uh, um, Heihachi. You essentially have to guess twice with him, uh, but you can block it on reaction though. The hell sweep, the second hit, and yeah. Like the second hits, uh, you can block that. In really? No, I don't think. Yeah. No. So too many, too <laughs> many people get eat that in order for me to believe it. Sure. People do. I, I but guess I think if, that's one of those things. If you're that, theory like, fighting, sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're <laughs> if you're ducking electrics on reaction, you know, I guess. But well, you stand block, and then if you see the low, then you duck. That's that's all there is. Oh, uh, I I suppose, but that <laughs> shit's just too fast. I think, but and in either case, I like Heiachi's Hell Sweep the most, but I like uh, Devil Jin's second of all the Hell Sweeps out there because he gets that knockdown and it bounces. So he gets he gets the let's say he fucks it up or whatever, and the first one whiffs or somehow hits, you know, causes a float of some random sh sort, and then it uh -huh. and then the second one hits and you go you go into a jungle. I really like that. It's kind of a you know, like a backup plan, plan B. And a lot of moves don't have that, and especially other uh, Mishimas. Like, if you look at it, uh, Kazuya's, which, you know, most people would probably say is, is the best. 
Uh, I'm in there because of the <laughs> knockdown and whatnot. But I I think Devil Jin has more potential. Uh, it, well, not, it's one of like two moves that he has that grants frame advantage, so I give him that. But you think about how his hell sweep used to be? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I the, but, well, because he could get a juggle just off the first one. Yeah, but. There was the best risk reward, eh, risk versus reward for a low move in it, like history of tech and the the way that his house sweep used to be and now it's just like counter hit only and it doesn't it like uh turn him backwards and everything too it doubled when you bound i i can't recall exactly oh, but no, it just it, causes- it's different he just doesn't give the same combo see i i don't know i i like it because it like it fits the bound system very well because the second hit bounds um on regular hit it may not knock down but if you get if you hit it you know both hits connect the second one, I mean, it does grant him advantage and yeah. puts the, his opponent in crouch, uh, which I really dig because one of my favorite moves in Tekken is uh, DJ down forward one two, and, uh, yep. and that's old school. You know, that's been in Tekken since Jin has been in Tekken. But uh, been busted since Jin has been yeah, in Tekken too. Yeah, and that fucking I love that fucking string, and it just I don't know, it just sets that up perfectly. And you know, as for me personally, uh, when I play Devil Jin, my game is is like focused around hell sweep and down forward one two like that I, my game revolves around that and even people who you know branch out a little bit you know who are so called <laughs> devil gin players you know even they're going to use a heavy dose of down forward one two cuz you know it's safe counter hit both hits are guaranteed you can delay it you know it's, isn't it punishable no negative 8 it is not I thought they made it no not not that i i'm aware of oh i'm thinking of something else go ahead <laughs> but uh and yeah even if i uh, you know you can play fucking weird games with it. I mean, if you want to just stop at the down forward one, uh, if you randomly hit that, you're at plus eight. Uh, if you yep. if it's just blocked, it's negative three, but from a defensive standpoint, are you going to attack that? Because if you attack that, he's gonna you're going to eat some counter hit damage from the two, which is pretty good. I mean, the two by itself does 18 damage, so, you know, you factor in counter hit, you're probably doing over 20. Plus, and I think it leaves him uh, at plus a trillion after that one, too. Uh, I think it's only plus three, at least according to... Uh, um, you know, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, plus three is still really good. I mean, it's still really good. It doesn't force crouch, which I actually think is good in that situation because his electric is retarded. So, yeah, he has electric. I, I like I'm saying, you can make a case for why he's good. It's just he has. I think it, one of his main issues is that he lacks crushes. I don't think he has a lot of crushes. That's an, that's another one. Because, uh, I mean, all of his crushes are, like, these crazy-ass jump moves. Like, they gave him the new, uh, you know, he has up four now, which is the new crazy thing, and you can go into fly from that. Um, but let's say you whiff that. Um, if you're if you're good, it, uh, you know, if you can if you played against Devil Jin enough to know, I mean, you can punish that. But uh, most people just sidestep, and I don't think anything out of that fly tracks. I think the only thing that out of the fly that tracks is the three, which is the, um, you know, dive kick. Yeah, the dive kick. And I thought that the one tracked. I can't. The, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. The, the little, um, yeah. Yeah, some little bitch punch. Yeah, a little bitch punch. But w- whatever. I'm not scared of that. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what? You know that, and it, I think it's high. I'm fairly certain that's high. I'm gonna double check that. Uh, in play, uh, and he still has demon paw, and hmm. he yeah. he's got the. Crouch dash three. I, I still love that move. Oh yeah, that's that. He's he's got some decent moves. It's just uh. They did tone down the crouch dash three though, because it used to be like I want to say it was like zero or something, and it forced crouch. But now it's negative three on block. It's a and like it used to be such a really really good pressure tool, like yeah. in five. But it's a, I don't know. It's cool. It's neat. You know, it jumps over stuff, but it's really really slow. And now, now that with the new with the new jump kick or whatever, what is it? Uh, doesn't he have like an up three or something like that? Um, well, he has the old. Oh, well, I shouldn't call it old school, but he has uh, still has his up forward four from. Yeah, that. Uh, I mean, that's still garbage too. But it's he doesn't need a crouch dash three when he has that. Yeah, that's true. That, I I do like up forward four. That that is really good, and it does knock down. Um, and gives in. I, I don't know if it guarantees a ground hit, but if it doesn't guarantee a ground hit, I mean, you're sure as hell not doing anything. <laughs> I mean, he's got all the advantage off that move. So yeah, it's Mishima wake ups after that. That's all I think of. Yep, it as. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, 
We we probably should uh, chat about uh, Punishers for a second because I actually think he is a really good Punisher. Because um, one one two, uh, it knocks down. It doesn't wall flat. Um, Heihachi is the only one who owns that for the one one two. Um, but it does knock down, and you know, just like you said, gives him the uh, the Mishima wake ups, uh, which is always a plus. Um, at twelve frames, he's got back one two, which uh, is a new move, and I, I love back one two. Uh, just even out, Super good. yeah. Just even out in the open. I mean, the fact that that's probably his best new move. Yeah, the fact that you can cancel the two and do other shit, and the two's a mid, so it's not like they're gonna like duck you and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, just completely el- eliminate any mix up. So wall splats, which is fucking spectacular. Uh, Cancelable. Can- yeah, yeah. Like as you said, it's cancelable. Um, there is a. Like, I don't know if he has anything between twelve and fifteen. Um, I know axe, Electric. axe kicks. Well, all right, sorry, uh, at 14 he gets axe kicks, but I don't think he has anything, uh, or uh, 14 he gets electric. Um, axe kicks at 13, I think they're 13 frames, but I don't think there's anything else special. I thought they slowed those down to 14 also. Uh, let me see. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I thought I heard. Well, remember, okay, while standing 4-4 four four is... Yeah, 11. that's like 11. Yeah. Um, so I guess you could do instant while standing, and that would be 12. So even if you're a little slow on instant wall standing, that, I mean that would still get you 13. Um, let me find it here. Down four, four, four. Uh, it says 13. So that's cool. Yeah. I I'm yeah. personally, I mean, I like throwing out axe kicks every once in a while because they're cool, they're neat. But uh, I really, really hate that if you finish it, the second one puts you at negative. <laughs> I hate that. Like I just, I just hate. Oh, people. that's that's one of the things I love about Mishima's, and even as a Mishima, that disadvantage is like the best bait ever. Oh, for electric and stuff, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. People always try to attack there, like if they think you know, the little frame horse. Mm-hmm. People see a, a disadvantage and they instantly think, oh well. And spacing characters like Mishima's, they just fucking slaughter frame horse. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Sometimes you just got to attack kids. And uh, it's even like, uh, it's even. Force is crouch. So, yeah, you have the advantage, but you're fucking crouching, so you're yeah. really playing a spacing death match here. Yeah. I guess it depends on, on what your character can do from crouch. Because um, if you have somebody who's got some really, really, really juicy crouch stuff, that, like, low, you know, tech crouch or crush or whatever, um, then you can probably play some pretty evil games um, if somebody throws you into crouch. Because I would say, you know, like a jack. You know, a jack would do really well from crouching because he's got all that fucking stupid garbage <laughs> from low. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's still it's still pretty nasty bait from that. Um, so uh, okay, so then you got uh, electric at fourteen, uh, and then if you want to get really saucy at fifteen, you can do uh, campaign kicks. Um, wall standing's pretty good, I think, because uh, he does have wall standing four four, which is way above average, uh, simply because it's, it's damage, you know. And yeah. then, like you said, two hits at eleven, yeah, yep, which is really nasty. Um, twin pistons is super good. Yeah, he has twin. Well, he has twin pistons at thirteen, but you know, it's not a launcher until it's a counter hit, or it's not going to. No, but it's one of uh, it's it's the other of his two moves that grants him major frames. That's true. So it's uh, it is really good. Um, and both hits grant him frames. So if, if for whatever reason you don't want to, you know, finish it or whatever, because I don't, you don't um, like it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and, and they're both pretty hefty too. The uh, wall standing one gives you plus five, and then the wall standing or the two gives you plus six. So yeah. Uh, and then at uh, fifteen, he's got wall standing two. Good old wall standing two. You know, they changed it a bit, but it's still really good. So I mean, it's essentially the exact same thing, um, just different animation. Actually, um. I I want to say that his wall standing two goes farther than Jin's wall standing two, the old wall standing two. It does. Yeah. It does. So I I would actually say that's that it's better. Yeah. Um. Because as far as I know, it has everything else is the exact same. It's uh, same damage. Uh. Still negative twelve. Um. He still juggles fifteen frames. So, yeah. I, I would I would call that a beef. That that would just be me. But. Uh, it's it's good and bad. Mm. Like how is his wall filled? Uh, his wall, I think his wall filth is really good. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Because uh, for me, I'm um, uh, I'm I'm just kind of cheesy simple, and uh, I usually do uh, down forward three two four, and then just kind of play the the fly mix up game. Because um, either you're going to sidestep or crap, are you slowing down? 
Hold on. Yeah, so I play the uh, the fly uh, mix up game because you know like we just mentioned you know you can uh, you can sidestep pretty much everything but the one option from fly, but uh, you don't even have to go in the fly if you don't want to. You can just land right back down. Um, so if somebody side starts sidestepping, any sort of advantage they might have had is gone. Um, and you know if you have those people who aren't uh, who aren't familiar with Devil Gin and they may not sidestep, then you know you have free mix ups from the fly. So. I mean, you can do the um, you can do the dive kick, or you can do the uh, the two, which is you know a black hole grab. So you know that's always fun. Um, so I like to do that, but I know that there's a uh, uh, still a bunch of other stuff that you can do. You know, uh, he still down forward one two bounds. So uh, I see a lot of people doing that. And then you do your uh, you know whatever you want to follow that up with. You can do uh, um, three ring circus, uh, which for all you uh, newer kids out there is one plus four. Um, you can play games with that, uh, can can kicks. You know, you can do, you can still do all that stuff into uh, uh, wake ups and stuff. So, I think his wall filth is pretty good. I mean, it's not the most damaging in in the world, but uh, the fact that you know most of that stuff just puts him at pretty good advantage. Uh, it gives him really good wake ups. So, and you know, he does have a hell sweep. You know, as much as uh, as much as you may hate it, it's still there. So. It, if your back is against the wall, it's still something you got to fear. So. Well, like, it's just that, uh, like, it, it does grant him good frames and everything, but it's like the Lars thing where, uh, you know, he gets a lot of frames out of the forward, forward, four, three, or, you know, for Devil Jin, the Hell Sweep, but he needs, like, a knockdown, though, to really make you scared because unless people are uh, just giving out counter hits, he's not getting, you know, he's not really putting the fear of God in him in them with his lows or whatever. I think he has to use his grabs more, even. And, uh, like, his whole mix-up game, I mean, he he basically plays like a Bruce uh, Steve counter-hit spacing character, but the lows, uh, it, it's just hard to whiff moves against Devil Jin, you know? You, if you play him careful, you're throwing out crush moves and everything, and, and he can't really crush you. It's, it's just hard for him to break down a turtle, I think. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can say that he does have one of the best crush moves in the game with Godfists, because, <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're jab happy, he's just going to kill you. Um, but I, I, I guess I can sort of agree with that. Um, and his he doesn't yeah he is missing the knockdown low. I mean that's that is a big thing. Um, but you know, like I said earlier, I don't mind the new uh, the new uh, Hell Sweep. Like it's I don't know I, I just think it's. Uh, it plays into his game by keeping him standing up, I guess. But I mean, you're right. Down back two doesn't knock down. Um, God, what, what other lows? He has, just has generic lows outside of that. I think I don't think he has any other big lows. Um, so yeah, he doesn't have anything that knocks down really. So. I think his grabs end up being uh, more important than you know a normal Mishima assault. Mm. That's all. He's, you know, he's a solid character. I, I put him at mid, you know, not too. like uh, the, the other gen. I put him at lower mid or whatever, but... I would agree with that. Well, I think... It's just that the... Well, especially compared to the to regular gen, uh, devil gen is way, way better at juggling. Way better. I mean, yeah. he hits 80s no problem. I mean, no sweat whatsoever. Yeah, his juggle damage is exceptional. Yeah, and, just... uh, and, and he has good wall carry, too, specifically because he has you know, laser scraper and, and the forward, forward three strings. So, if, uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely one area that, uh, that he, is, he is not lacking in at all. And what I think is fucking insane is that he got, does good damage without bound. Like, he can hit the mid-high yeah. 60s without even doing a bound at all. And, uh, and that's incredibly scary if he's getting you to the wall <laughs> and doing mid-60s. He, he does get you to the wall. He has great wall carry and everything like that. While standing two is really good for the wall carry. I think that it sometimes hurts him because uh, it pushes him so far that sometimes it fucks up his uh, like his short range to wall combos or whatever. And and the only other reason that I would give like like leave it as a tie like a trade off with normal gins while standing two is because uh, it actually requires slightly more skill to do the combos off of while standing two. Not that that's like a huge deal or whatever, but you know crunch time. That means you know. Let's say on a percentage, he's going to drop five percent more combos than that's true than, than normal gin. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you're being nitpicky, but, you know, we've said it on the show before, you know, sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> Right, yeah. When you're talking about, especially with a game like T6, it's so balanced. You know, you gotta, you gotta do that. You gotta, gotta consider those things. And I, and I would agree because you know, uh, gin, re- regular gin juggles are very cookie cutter, and uh, Devil Gin is one of the you know few characters in the game where it still, still requires a decent amount of skill to do his juggles. So. It, it's just, he's like kind of in, uh, the antithesis to normal spacing characters. Normal spacing characters like Bruce and Steve, they require like counter hits and they hunt for the counter hits. He does it on normal damage, but he doesn't really have the counter hit tools to stop you from from getting them. He has to rely 100% on his spacing and everything. He has to stay perfect with that. Yep. I would agree with that. And I would uh, kind of, uh, to build off of uh, uh, the juggle damage that we were just talking about, I think he does just great damage all over the place. Um, yes. And most, I mean, some of his his pokes aren't too, you know, high damaging. Like generic low obviously doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, his down three, which is you know another little low poke that they gave him, uh, that doesn't do a lot of damage. But outside of that, everything else does really good damage. Down forward one two, you know, it does great damage. Demon demon paw, you know, we talked about that. That that does great damage. Um, you know, all of his punishers one one two back one two. Uh, you know, while seeing 4-4, I mean, if he hits you, he's going to hit you really hard. Um, For sure. And it's kind of weird because, uh, you know, with that sort of damage and stuff, I don't know, it feels feels really weird. You'd think he'd have, like, more ways to pressure you, <laughs> but uh, he, he doesn't. It's down 4-1-2 while standing 1-2 hell sweep and, like, jabs, uh, that stop, you know, like his first jab, and I think just hitting two, I think that's about it for his frames. Everything else, I mean, he's in this situation where he has to play a spacing mix-up after everything, like he's hit you, and he has to backdash. Yeah. Yep, I would agree, because I can't really think of anything that gives him, but like other other than the, the back 12, you know, the charge-up stance, like oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you actually hold it, you know, that, uh, that can give you, um, you know, a ton of advantage, but uh, actually, if you're having a hard time as Devil Jin, you and, and even Normal Jin can do that too. Like if you're having a hard time getting frames, you can also do that Crouch Dash Running Three bullshit. Yeah, that's pretty good. And you mentioned it earlier the uh, the new Up Forward Three thing. Uh, it's yeah. slow, but it's cool. I mean, it, it works, and uh, it juggles on counter hit, uh, gives you plus seven on regular hit, and leaves them crouching. But uh, even on block, it's plus three and leaves them in crouch. So. I mean, that's, if you're looking for, uh, plus tools, you know, that's, that's real good. Um, obviously God Fist is gonna give you advantage, but, um, you know, just as you said, you know, it's, it's a spacing tool. Even if you block an electric, it's still the pushback, you know, makes that move a spacing tool, so. Oh yeah, totally. So it's not, it's not just true advantage, you know, as, as I would. Unless you're back to the wall, then you're kind of F. Yeah, a little bit. I know he he does have the uh, the new four 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 that high spin kick. Uh, that thing's kind of slow, but I mean that's another move that gives advantage. But you know, high. Why would you use that that's, when you have? A- that's honest truth. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Um, do you know what Jin standing the regular Jin standing four looks like? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, actually, here here's a good way to describe it. You know, uh, the new down forward one four that Jin has in tag two. Yeah. Okay, it looks just like a roundhouse. Yep, it, it looks like that, except it's you know all electricity and stuff. <laughs> Holy shit! But, uh, <laughs> but it's a, but really, I mean, it, it's a slow. It's essentially a slower version of Godfist because it gives you. I think uh, Godfist gives you plus five as well. So let me check that. Yeah, Godfist gives you plus five, so it gives you the same amount of frames. Uh, it has the same pushback, I believe, as Godfist. Um, it's also high. But it doesn't lead to juggle. So, <laughs> as far as I know, I mean, at the wall, at the wall splat, but it, I think Godfist okay. is just essentially a better version. You know? so, mm-hmm. so I really wouldn't rely on that. So if you if so if you look at that list, I mean, what we named four moves, including Godfist, that do, um, that or that give him plus on block, but. You know, <laughs> each one of them has like a different circumstance that it's usable. Yeah. That's the only problem too. Yeah, people will bait Devil Jin too. If if you're having a hard time with the Devil Jin, bait him with a lot of moves that recover crouching to just to keep him honest on his 
electrics. Don't let him just throw them out at all day. Yeah, and I think he has a hard pro- even though he, which is kind of funny. I think he's a spacing character, but I think he actually has problems with spacing characters, like uh, oh, yeah, char- sure. characters that have you know the shoulders or the long range tools. I mean, he can't just sit there and kind of whiff electrics. You know, you have to be a lot more careful with that shit. And I, yeah, I think those characters just slaughter him. And especially, I mean, he has Demon's Paw, which is really good, but, and 443, I guess, is a long, long range tool, but that's kind of slow. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that he's a bad tracker, but, I mean, you can definitely step him. I mean, he's not the best tracker in the world. And if you're playing that spacing game back to him, <laughs> I, th- I think that's yeah. a lot of trouble. I think he's less, uh, less good at tracking than, Normal gen, even. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I definitely. I know normal gen is retarded tracking. You can't fucking step at anything. Which is weird, because he's, like, he's so bad. But, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of funny looking through the, like, the frame data and stuff. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three. Shoot the works. <laughs> that, no. that shit is, is plus five on block. I didn't know that. But it whiffs so much, you know. What? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it whiffs all the time. But I just... Uh, pull it, point that out because I thought it was kind of funny. And man, they raped uh, Three Ring Circus so hard. Oh yes, they did. God, yeah, that that sucks. <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> looks cool, I guess, for all the the new kids who don't really know how to play the game. Like, oh snap, that looks sweet. But yeah, just doesn't it doesn't have those random hitboxes that'll just float you. That doesn't even make sense why they raped that move too, because like they already got rid of the hell sweep. So they take the move that used to get the combo off of it or whatever, and oh, we're going to rape that too. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't busted. The only reason it was good before is because you got it off of Hell Sweep. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, don't really know why they, they nerfed some of the things. Because like, you figure, even if he had all the shit in, that he had in T in DR, you know, where he was, I, I wouldn't call it unanimous, but you know, most people would uh, would put him number one. And... uh even if you, all, I mean, really, all you had to do was take away the stupid down forward one two ender, and just make that not possible, and that, that's it. Keep him the same for the most part in T six, and he still would maybe only be high mid, you know. But well, I'm glad they took rid of the uh, free hit after super throw. That shit was retarded. Yes. P.S. You play devil gen, use the super throw. <laughs> yeah. The the only thing that uh, that super throw. Um, that's that's bad about super throw is it's kind of easy to see coming and and in order to like sneak it in there you have to have really really fluid wave dashing um so did they uh did they slow down the animation um i i thought it i thought it was still 10 frames it is but i mean most people just use the same setups so it's just like you know it's kind of like a mad axes you know every once in a while you're still going to hit a mad axes but now everyone knows mad axes setups you know so even if you're mixing in regular grabs and stuff, I mean, a lot of times you can still see that. Um, and most people, I would actually rant about that. About the Mad Axe? About oh, Mad Axe. It is the most hyped fucking throw for what it is. Ugh. It is. And most people nowadays, I mean, you have to be really careful with your grab setups now because most people will just random hop kick you. So unless you're a king or a Craig <laughs> and you're going to, and it doesn't matter, you know, most people are going to just try to random hop kick you. So you got to be really careful with that shit. But, uh, but grabbing out of wave dashing, especially if you do super grab or any other sort of command grab, uh, that's mm, still complicated wire. Yeah, it's still saucy. <laughs> still saucy. I mean, that, that, that'll mm-hmm. never go away. I mean, most pe- people just don't, don't know what to do once people start wave dashing in the face, but. You know, it's part part of the game. Uh, but you know, we should talk about his grabs because uh, you you know you just mentioned that they took away the um, the free down back two after super grab, um, which for those who don't know is a giant swing twelve. That's that's what it is. Laser <laughs> laser grab. Um, and you used to get, be able to get a free down back twelve after it, which you cannot do anymore. Um, but uh, it, still, even though you can't get that, I think pretty much all of his grabs give him pretty good wakes. Um, Oh, uh, they, they fucked him in another one, another throw too. Which one? Uh, his one throw used to be super fucking busted. Is that uh, that the kicks? 
Yeah, the bitch yep, kick yep. grab. I actually was fucking, just about used to give him a free fucking hell sweep after that. Yeah, I was. And if you got up, it would get fucking juggled. That was the most retarded fucking thing, and nobody ever talked about it. Everybody loved the super throw; it was super good. But I think that the fucking uh, free hell sweep was the most busted fucking throw that he yeah, had. Yeah, because essentially, you're, it's like a you know, it's the same situation as his juggles were. You know, down back one two, or not down back, sorry, down forward one two. You either eat the hell sweep or you stand up and it juggles you. I mean, what are you gonna do? So. <laughs> So yeah, same situation. But yeah, you can't do that anymore. It doesn't. I I, I was actually going to mention that before you beat me to it. His uh, <laughs> they did they did tone that crowd down as well. I mean, he still gets like uh you know free wave dash or whatever. But um yeah, I think it pushes back a little bit more than it used to. It uh, you can get up yeah they can. I think that devil gin actually recovers slower than he used to too. Yeah, so I mean, it's not nearly as good as it, it used to be for sure. Um, two grab still good. Still like two grab. Um, mm-hmm. complicated wire, you mentioned that, uh, nothing guaranteed after it, but, you know, still leaves him in a really, really good Oki position. <laughs> yeah, and whatever you're going to do, you're making a, a bad choice, that's all <laughs> yeah. I like, no. Yeah, it, it puts him in a really good situation, and, uh, and I do really like his Oki. Um, he, I mean, even though they toned down through Ring Circus, he still has it. Um, down forward 1-2 will randomly pick up, you know, so, and... Down forward 1-2, I'll, I'll definitely co-sign on and but man now, three ring circus you might as well count that as a non-existent move <laughs> <laughs> i guess i mean the, when you have down forward the range is so trash yeah man. when you have down forward one two though i mean that's that's what i do i don't even fuck up right. three ring circus ever so <laughs> and uh while standing four that in fact if you're going to play devil gin the first thing you have to learn is how to while standing four properly okay teach like, us teach us how do you while standing like, four properly well like uh you know you gotta you gotta Get the timing down for after your uh, throws, everything, the spacing. While standing four is a fucking skill move. It's not like you're going for uh, crazy launcher shit, but it's a fucking killer spacing tool. Good for picking up after, you know, knockdowns, all that shit. I just think that while standing four with uh, Devilgen is fucking one of his best scenarios. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. It's, it's really awesome. And for those who aren't familiar with Nishimas or, you know, specifically with Devilgen or whatever... The uh, wall standing four is very, very different from down forward four. So, I mean, it recovers faster. It's faster, just in general. Um, yeah, down forward four is trash unless you're punishing. That's true. Yeah, it absolutely is. So, and and even if you do, uh, like down forward four, the only scenario that I can like, the only theoretical scenario that I can think of where you might want to use that instead of while standing four four is like maybe range punishing or something. But if you do the crouch dash version of while singing 4-4, you're essentially doing it at the same speed. So, you know, it's – and the crouch dash is going to take you forward. So, I mean, that while singing 4 is in every way better than down 4-4. So, yeah, I, I will co-sign on that for you. Hell yeah. you, you got to learn how to, how to while singing 4. And it's such a good bait tool. Oh, man, it's such a good bait tool because it's only negative oh, 3 on block. So you're just like do 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 boom, uh-huh. boom. Normal normal while standing fours in uh, in six are like minus six actually. Yeah, they're they're pretty. And his is minus three, and it fucking gives him his perfect spacing and everything. Yep, and if you don't really want to, uh, like, let's say you're in a scenario where you don't know if it's going to hit or not, so you don't want to finish it, it gives you the, the plus eight, you know, on on hit. So, I mean, it just works. It's it's a really really good tool. And if you're doing it out of crouch dash or wave dash, you know, chances are it's going to track. So. So you're doing it, uh, so it's still really, really, really fucking good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would, uh, I would give him a, a pretty good Oki. I mean, it's not the best ever, but I mean, it's there. I mean, you have to be really careful. So, um, I think uh, another something that uh, we should mention, uh, just because I'm thinking about it with, uh, with Oki, is uh, his safety. Um, he is. I think that's one of the big uh, areas yep. of concern. Um, he's not the safest character in the world. That's a that's actually why another reason to use while standing for it's his fastest recovering like Oki usable move and everything too. That's like if you throw a three ring circus out and they didn't move or whatever, ugh, free wake up kick for sure. Yeah, but down forward one two, that thing's a savior. That's a pretty good move. That thing's but... fucking saucy no matter what. I mean, even if you fuck up the down forward one and then and you know they don't do anything and then you do the two and then they try to move, you know it goes straight into bounds. So you're still getting your your. Uh, your golden opportunity there. And, I mean, really, worst-case scenario, you whip it and they get a get-up kick, eh, whatever. 
know. <laughs> I love me some Dow Ford one too. I love that fucking. Okay. And I'm not claiming the uh, the wall standing kick is the ultimate end all, but <laughs> if someone does a three ring circus, I mean that shit is just hitting. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. You, oh, you finished the string combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But uh, as, as it pertains to everything else, just uh, God, I mean, he just gets owned for everything. I mean, Hell Sweep is going to get you launched um, if they somehow. Uh, not just launched. It's, that's one of those easy uh, delayed hop kick yep. type. Yeah, it's like God, what is it? It's like negative twenty. Uh, this is something ridiculous. 23. Yeah, so, I mean, it's really bad. Um, and, you know, you figure everything, if they bait uh, correctly or they guess correctly on a god fist, that'll get you at least punished while standing punished. Um, I mean, god fist is so almighty, but, you know, it is high. Mm-hmm. You can't forget about that. <laughs> so if, you have, if you're going up against somebody who's got a really good low crush uh, or high crush, you know, it's... Uh, pre- pre- preferably a high crush that's a low, because obviously a god fist isn't good. It's, it's as good an abusable high as you're ever going to find, but uh, yeah, oh reckless abandon, huh? Exactly. <laughs> um, I do like laser scraper, but uh, you know, as kind of uh, just one of those things that you can kind of mess with and mess with timing and whether or not the you know you're going to do the second or the third hit or whatever. But you know, every single one of those is punishable, block punishable, and uh, I believe you can still sidestep the last one. Correct me if I'm yep. wrong. Yeah, you can still sidestep it. Um, I, I, Both options. Yeah, so same way. Uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, just uh, wall standing two is really punishable. Um, we already talked about axe kicks. If you finish them, I mean, those are launch launch punishable. Uh, down four, a uh, down back two, which is a great low. Uh, I mean, that's still negative twelve. So they, yeah, that's actually an improvement. Yeah. It used to be launch punishable, so I give him that. I mean, but it's just another hell sweep. Yeah, it is. Low, lower reward, uh, lower risk. Yep. Um, the new, I like the new down three poke that they gave him, but at the same time, for what it does, you know, it's negative twelve, which sucks. <laughs> what it, what is standing? Yeah. What is uh? What is generic? Um, it's, is it negative 12 or? Generic is, uh, minus 13. 13? Okay. So it's a little safer than generic low, but you know, it doesn't, doesn't high crush. Use generic low, yeah, though. Use generic, precious. use generic low. Absolutely. Yeah. Down three is, uh, I mean, I, I would only use down three and I do use down three, uh, when I'm playing devil gen, but I use it just to fuck with it. You know, we talk about a lot, uh, on this podcast, even if a move is bad, you know, still use it. Give your opponent something else to think about. Uh, so down three isn't the worst move. That, well, that rule has an exception. You you only use the idiot flip if you're really trying to fucking embarrass someone. It's the uh, Paul idiot flip. <laughs> oh man, that but that's <laughs> one of the coolest moves ever. So <laughs> yeah, the Devil Jin does even have uh, good unblockables. The quick uh, back one plus four. I I don't care what people say. That move is fucking awesome. It, well, yeah. I mean, you can. I think you you can step it. But I mean, in certain scenarios, I mean, when walls are as prevalent as they are in Tekken. If you can't step, or you can't step very fast, or whatever, or you know that's going to kill you. And in wall splats, so high wall splats. So <laughs> I mean that. Uh, I love that shit. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I do as well. <laughs> I, I like that move as well. Um, God, what, what else we got? I mean, you figure uh, if you, I see a lot of Devil Gen players using the up four um, as their primary low crush. Um, you figure that is really punishable, even if you continue to other stuff. Um, are you talking about the uh, cheese wheel fucking bullshit? No, 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 no. I'm talking about up forward four is cheese. Okay. No, no, no. Up forward four. No, they just took it away. He doesn't have cheese wheels anymore. Okay, good. Yeah, because uh, you're, so you're talking about that jump kick that we gives him the Mishima wake ups? Uh, no. The I'm talking about the one that uh, it goes in the fly. Oh, okay. No. People do that. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean what you can do up forward four. Up forward four is a really up, you know good uh, high crush and whatever. But up four, just regular up four, um, as far as I know, that crush is high as two. So, because... Oh, I was going to say that up forward four is trash for crushing lows. A forward four is? Really? I, oh, yeah, you can low jab him the fuck out of it. It's retarded. Really? I thought it crushed lows pretty solid. Well, well again... It, it, has, it has frames where it does it, but uh, the frames where you can hit him out of it actually, like, are way more... You know, common than <laughs> you actually reliably crushing something. Well, like that. I guess that uh, you know that just favors my argument uh, then, because you, I mean, that would be. I mean, what other high crush or low crush does he have? 
Uh, can can cakes? Is that low crush? Might. <laughs> but, it better. For what yeah, it is, yeah, it better. Uh, but, you know, you figure up four, um, that's going to be long, or, you know, some punishable. I, I don't play against Devil Jin enough to know what the best punish would be for every situation, but, uh, I mean, you're going to get something out of the deal. Um, so up forward four, if you can, if that isn't like the best low crush, you know, there you go. That I would probably put up four ahead of that then. Uh, yeah. if you're going to, if you're going to use a tool for low crushing. Um, and that's, uh, and that's not punishable. Up forward four isn't punishable, but it's still negative eight. So, you know, that's not, not the best. Um, but, I mean, what else does he have? He doesn't I you does uh the scissor kicks? Does, does that look crush? Oh wow. <laughs> or slide three? I mean I guess he, Demon scissors yeah. is dope. Uh, I have to actually add that to my stress. <laughs> I just would use those. <laughs> oh man. I wish you could tech roll those. That'd be the fucking shit. <laughs> but you can't. Um but I mean that's it. I mean what else does he have? Oh, uh, he does have the up four three. Sorry. Should should uh throw that in there, but that's uber slow. Um <laughs> Uh, yes, slash kick. I mean, just all these really, really slow or punishable stuff. Um, yeah, his his crush moves are fucking trash. Yeah, and that's even that's Demon's that's Paw. I mean, Demon Paw is is amazing. I mean, I love that move. Every I mean, every Devil Gen or Gen player is going to use Demon Paw. That used to be the best move in the game. Yeah. and it's it's not really uh, that it's gotten weaker. It's just Everyone, the average move in Tech yeah. and Six has gotten so much better. But Demon Paw is still yeah. Yep, and I, I would absolutely agree. I mean, now that everybody and their mo- their mother has a shoulder or something, you know, it's it's really hard to get away with demons. Ball. But uh, I mean, you still got to use it. It's still really good. But you know, it's just added to the list of stuff that can be punished um, that he has to use. Uh, I like. I'm kind of torn with down four or twelve because I like that move, but it's so slow, and you know, it's mostly just going to be used as a bound, but. I mean, I guess you can throw that in there if you're looking for something. Oh, yeah, the chop. Yeah, the chop. Um, how, I mean, what else is there? What, what else does he have? Um, I, th- uh, I think any other moves you're really adding, it's you're, you're compounding the character. You're not really benefiting your play style. Yeah. So we got that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that would be most... And, and kind of to go along with the safety thing, really, in my eyes, the only real panic button he has is God Fist. And I guess you could throw up four in there because it not only crushes lows, it crushes highs as well, and you can get a juggle, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't think – I mean, he has reversal, I guess. You know, you can throw that out there. Uh, no, he, he needs to just rely on backdash. Yeah. That's, I, well, that's his main crush move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, you said a, a few times, you know, he's a spacing character, so he doesn't really have a whole lot in the way of panic buttons. It uh, doesn't have the magic four. It uh, doesn't have any 12-frame launcher as far as I know. Um yeah, so. he, he doesn't deal well with people who uh, try to stop his pressure or whatever unless he's backdashing it. So, I mean, like, you're, you, he does so much damage on normal hit. If you feel like it's your turn to attack, you don't have to worry about, like, taking some major counter hit damage unless, you know, like, you just ate a single jab. I mean, then you got to worry about his down forward, too. But yeah. otherwise, I mean, the, your choice should always be, are you placing, playing the spacing game with him, or are you taking your turn to attack him through initiative that he doesn't have? I agree. Again, once again, I will co-sign on that. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, I think, I mean, that's a pretty good, uh, I mean, I think we, we covered uh, most things. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's really good in the damage area. He's got uh, got good Oki. Um, he's a good Punisher. He's got some pretty decent pokes, although his his low pokes could be better. Um, but I mean, he's got some stuff he can work with. But uh, everything else, he's either average or below average. So, so I would I would agree with you. I, I would put him right in the middle, right at right at mid. Um, he's got a chance, uh, just like every character in the game. But uh, I mean, I think I, again with top tier characters, I think he struggles. Um, so, and anyone who heard me talking bad about his house sweep or whatever. Let's just keep things in perspective. I compared it to Lar- Lars's forward four four three, but his is still better. So fuck you, Lars. <laughs> yeah, and you said that. Uh, um, I was actually I meant to say this. You said that uh, Lars uh, four 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 three. Um, you know, it gives frames or whatever, but it doesn't. On hit, it's negative three. So if, it, <laughs> if you stop at forward four, my mistake. <laughs> if you stop at forward four four, it gives you a couple frames. Um, 
maybe four or five or something like that. Um, but you're greatly sacrificing damage. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, but, you know, I'm gonna give, uh, Lars the benefit of the doubt on that one. He has some pretty, uh, pretty decent, like, setups and stuff after that. So, I mean, it kind of plays into that sort of game. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't give him an advantage or anything like that. So I, I would give the, uh, Another reason. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I would get, and both hits of DJ's Hell Sweep gives him advantage. So, uh, yeah. I give the, uh, um, the tiebreaker to DJ. But, uh, and Devil Jin can juggle off of his. So, yeah. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna favor DJ in that area. Um, cool. So I think, uh, I think we covered it. We're pretty, uh, we're pretty aligned with how we, we look at Devil Jin. It's kind of funny. I thought he was, a uh, like absolute complete ass when I first started playing T6, but, uh, um, I, th- I think everyone did. They saw that new while standing too and they just, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, everybody I think just focused a lot on the, all the nerfs and all the changes, and they're like, "Oh, this sucks. This sucks. This isn't DR. This sucks." And then they, <laughs> and they just kind of moved on. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can still win with him, but uh, he he's mid of the mid, so he's hold, <laughs> holding down that center that center aisle, and uh, that's where he is. Um, okay, cool. So that will wrap up our, our DJ um, talk. Oh. Oh, one other detail for those that actually don't know this. This is a old school Devil Jin. Well, actually, any Mishima really, but but in this you know context, uh, one of the things Devil Jin has to do is like if you're baiting whiffs or whatever, and you want to go for the most damage you possibly can, you know, naturally most of the time you're going to do an electric on the whiff, but uh, sometimes you'll crouch dash into while standing too. And that's always, you know, solid because it's part of the mix up. Like you're you back dash and then you take a free mix up sometimes. Um, Crouch dash into while standing two is crouch dash and then you hit back in two or whatever. Yeah, except it's actually and people people will fuck that up quite often. So one of the old school strats is to do crouch dash back two three or crouch dash back two four to you know buffer in uh, another move because if you're just doing back two, it sucks so bad. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really does. And I don't... launch to the block. So just keep that in mind that you want to you know like whenever you do crouch dash while standing two, you you're hitting the other buttons with it. Yep. Yep. Good. Uh... Good, good note on that because uh, a lot of people kind of forget about that. And yeah, if uh, and sometimes you know that can that can really bail you out because back oh. to back two by itself is negative thirteen, but back to three, even if they duck it, even if they duck the back two, the back three covers you a little bit, and sometimes you can randomly get counter hits and stuff, and yep. you know whatever. So I mean, it's it's really good. Uh, and it actually jails. Yeah, it does jail. And uh, I'm glad you just you mentioned the wall standing cancels just in general because I don't think we've really talked about that at all. And uh, that's an old school like Tekken three. I think was like the first. Did he have wall standing two in Tekken three? I can't remember. He did. Yeah. Did he? Okay. So yeah. So you could wall standing two cancel. Um, but in order to do that, you know, he Dan mentioned it. It's back back then too. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like. Um, uh, like an electric where, you know, you do down and then down to down forward. You know, it's not at the same time, but you're only supposed to have like a frame or two max of uh, weight in between the inputs. And it's, uh, you know, it's the same sort of thing with the uh, with the wall standing cancel. After you do the, the crouch dash, you have to give it a frame, do back, give it another frame, then do your input. And, uh, and it's tough. I mean, you know, it's, you have to, that's something you have to practice. It's just like electric. I mean, it, you have to practice that. Because I remember I used to be the shit at doing that in tag, and I stopped playing Mishimas that required a Wasi any cancel. So, I'm, I, maybe 50% of the time I get it. So, I mean, that stuff deteriorates. So you gotta. That's actually integral to current uh, Devil Jin, too, is yeah. that uh, Crouch Dash cancel, because uh, his best juggles, where he's going for, like, the farthest wall push. After you bound him, you do crouch dash uh, twin pistons, and it just carries them forever. Yep, that's that's true. Absolutely. So, yeah, glad glad you mentioned that because if you're looking to pick up Devil Jin, that's something that you uh, that you have to learn that you you gotta gotta know how to do. So, cool. Thank you for that little tidbit, Dan. Hey, you're the, you're the knowledge master. But uh, it's it's integral shit. <laughs> integral shit. So, uh, got any uh, got any other tidbits? Uh, any other closing notes for Devil Jin? Don't play him. <laughs> Watch, he's gonna be busted in tag two. Oh, he will. The Mishmas look good. They do look good. I haven't looked. I haven't seen any. Well, 
granted, I haven't watched a, a lot of any Tag 2 shit, but I haven't seen anything on Devil Jim or Reddit. And in this game, this Tag 2, I mean, it is so juggle-centric. Your pokes are less important than ever, comparatively. And, and Electric just being still the best launcher there is in the game, Mishimas are still strong. And they gave the, the backdash back, like the old Tag... Uh, Tag and Tekken 5 style backdash where it's it's a little bit bigger and everything. That just makes Electric even better because it's an advancing launcher and everything. Ah, nice. Yeah, I uh, I don't know how system wise. I don't know how I, how I'm gonna feel about this system because it's very you know it's the, it's polar opposite. Even though it's Tag 2, it's polar opposite to what the original Tag was. Like even though they're giving back the old backdash and you know whatever, it's still it's very, very much. It looks like a um, offense. Offense is your best defense. You know, like in Tag Two, it was Turtle Turtle Fest. Oh my god! But in, in Tag Two, it doesn't look that way. Um, Actually, that's that's how it's been since Tekken Four. Uh, offensive turtling is the strongest style in Tekken. And I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really a huge fan of that all that much. Um, I mean, I like. I like having a, a good amount of offense mixed in with your defense, but like it's getting to the point where it's like even it's just hard to defend. Period. Let's uh, let's break that down for kids. Uh, offensive turtling, if you don't know, is where you can use like a sequence of moves or something like that, where the risk is constantly lower for the attacker than it is for the uh, defender, and then really you're just you know using a bunch of safe crap or whatever to create uh, create openings like um. If you're if you're playing like uh, Nina, just as an example, she has that down back three where she has uh, so much advantage that her down forward one is basically unbeatable. She can just keep uh, doing a, a sequence, a can string basically of that until you feel like uh, giving up some kind of bigger damage, and then all of a sudden she backdashes and you know launches you for way more damage. It's it's attacking, but you're not really going for the hits. You're just attacking to keep someone afraid of what. They've trained you to do. Yep. 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 Um, so you know, while we're on the uh, subject of tag two, um, there were some stuff that I actually want to talk about um, and kind of get it out there in, in case people aren't reading articles or whatever. Because uh, you know, I think we mentioned it, we talked a little bit um, when Ogre was on the last podcast how um, Love. Eris, <laughs> how Eris, you know, had, just had you know there were some level up your game videos out there. Um, for Tag 2, because, you know, they pretty much, Eris specifically, and he even says this in, in the article that he wrote, that he was at E3 specifically for Tag 2. His only goal the entire time while he was there was to learn as much as possible as he could about Tag 2. Um, so it ha if anybody hasn't read it yet, go over to avoidingthepuddle.com and read that article, because it's got some uh, juicy tidbits and stuff in there. But uh, some of the stuff that he mentions, I kind of wanted to go over, because, you know, we're talking about this defense stuff, and you know, offense is your best defense, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, there's still no tag cancel, which I, I hate. I hate that there's not a tag cancel. I think you should be able to tag cancel. But uh, the way that he makes it sound, you know, you're using tags kind of in a defensive manner. You know, how um, – because you can kind of create whiffs, and he even says this, where you can kind of create whiffs where other times you w a backdash wouldn't do that for you. Because, you know, your one character is running out, and then your next one is running in. So, like, if you have somebody who's kind of pressuring you... Sway. Yeah, so exactly. So, like, if you, you kind of have, you know, you have somebody on your, your ass or whatever, and you, you somehow get that little bit of breathing room, but you know they're going mm -hmm. to attack, you tag out, whiff, then you tag in, punish. So, I mean, I guess that, I mean, that's going to be the style. I mean, that's how you're going to have to use tags. Uh, that, or you're going to have to use it like, um, like a Marvel sort of uh, strategy where... Your best tag is not your raw tag. It's actually your DHC. Um, so you're going to have to do your juggle. And if you if you start a juggle or whatever with your main character and you need to get them out, you're going to have to do it in the juggle and, you know, tag a salt or whatever, you know. Uh -huh. So, um, so I mean, that's the style that's going to be, uh, which is kind of weird. I don't know how, I'm gonna, how much I'm going to like that. Uh, well, with no tag cancel, that uh, using using your tag to escape stuff, that's going to be like the high risk. Yeah, I know. I, but it's one of those things, what else are you going to do? I mean, you're sitting there, you're, you're getting pressured. Your only real option is to either find your opening and just jab and then tag, you know, or whatever, or try to get some advantage and then tag, or, you know, 
roll the dice and then try it. Just be unpredictable yeah. with that shit. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the only thing that's going to, I don't like. Yeah, that's the thing that I loved about the first tag that I don't really think I'm going to like about the second tag is that you could, in tag one, you could tag for free, basically. I mean, if you had enough time to tag out, then you could block, you know, with the tag cancel, you could block as soon as you got in. I mean, there were some situations where it was not wise to tag. For example, tagging while you're on the ground is going to get you launched. But um, because it takes so much longer for them to get up and, you know, kind of crawl their way out. But for the most part, tagging was free. You know, you didn't really have to worry about that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I, how I really like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not making any, uh, I guess, assessment on all that just yet. I'm, I'm, I gotta play with the system myself too. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and I understand that. You know, it's one of those things where you just, uh, um, you know, it like, like, uh, you know, a lot of people have said. Um, so far, uh, including Eris, you know, it's only, I think Harada said it was only like 75, 80% complete, somewhere around there. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's still a large chunk left to go, um, for them to complete that game. So who knows what's going to change? Maybe all the stuff that, uh, uh, we've heard about every single character, all the frame data and stuff, maybe they'll just mix all of that up, you know, who knows? I, I'm pretty sure that's actually going to happen. I think a lot of these moves that you've seen aren't on the characters that they're going to end up being on, too. Uh, it's possible. Like the old uh, Tekken 4, uh, everyone was complaining about how busted Huarong was in the beta or whatever because he had the uh, the T4 Jin parry, and he could parry into back three. <laughs> and then they completely take that off of him. I'll give it to Jin. The irony is if Huarong had it, he would have been able to compete. <laughs> <laughs> And if they had... Jin, Jin would have been completely fucked. Yeah. It would have actually balanced the game out completely, just that switch. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, it would have, uh, if Jin didn't have it, Warong did, it would have uh, made the game a little bit more balanced. But. Um, okay, so I still want to talk about Tag, Tag 2. Um, so, judging from uh, what, what we can see, um, it, I actually like the stages. Because, um, as far as what I've heard and what I've read on, um, there aren't really any super small stages anymore. And uh, all the smaller stages, at least that they have available um, in the, you know, the beta or whatever, um, mm -hmm. they all break into much, you know, larger areas. So I like that a lot because um, I'm not a big fan of walls. So the more, and especially since you can't tag cancel and stuff, at least not yet, uh, you know, walls are, suck <laughs> a lot. So yep. so the, the more time away from walls, the better. Um and I didn't realize this, but I guess every character has uh, a generic tag assault launcher. I, I didn't know that. It's uh, apparently in the beta, 1 plus 2 plus 5, and 5 is your tag button. Um, mm -hmm. That's a generic mid uh, launcher that starts a tag oh. assault. Which is, is it at least Wicked Punishable? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's I haven't really seen any more info on it. Um, I'm guessing it would be pretty punishable. Uh, but from what I've heard, like, it kind of, I, I think it's actually a pretty good balancing tool, because even if it, I mean, assuming it's not launch punishable, I mean, if it's, like, somewhere good, like, around negative 12, negative 13, where it should be, um, you figure that... You think it should be? Yeah, I do. Because I think it gives characters um, that who don't necessarily have good whiff launchers, it gives them an option, you know? Um, so, so I like that. But... I don't know. I mean, where? I mean, you think it should be launch punishable? Really? Oh yeah. I, oh yeah. If, <laughs> I think I think that it's going to completely uh, eliminate the individuality of the characters. Like, if some characters are supposed to be really good at launching or whatever, I mean, suddenly they don't need to use that because they can use ta uh, the tag assault one instead. I think that that should only be like a. a a universal desperation launcher kind of thing. Like, oh, they whiffed, and my character doesn't normally have this. You really have to use some skill to use the generic one. Yeah. That's that's my opinion, anyways. Um, I guess I wouldn't mind it too much if it was launch punishable because it's one of those things where you should probably only use it if it's a whiff punisher, you know. Um, yeah. So I guess I wouldn't mind it too much, uh, but I don't know. I mean, if it was, I, it definitely shouldn't be safe. That's for damn sure. But um, I don't know. I wouldn't mind it if it was negative twelve, negative thirteen. That wouldn't bug me too much. Uh, the I guess the only thing that really. Um, could make it busted is that it's a mid launcher, you know, that starts a, a tag. If it was just like a high or something like that, I think that makes sense. But 
I guess, uh, you know, they got to give everybody a, uh, a launcher. An electric? Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's my thinking of it, is if electric is safe, why isn't this safe? You know, that sort of deal. But I guess electric isn't made anymore. Um, but speaking of electric, well, though, like tag... It also requires uh, the crouch dash motion, too. That's true. Well, I, I have no idea any of the frame data on the generic assault launcher, so who knows? Maybe it's like 17, 18 frames. I don't know. I don't even know if I've seen it, you know. <laughs> I don't really know what it... Yeah, I just know it exists. I certainly haven't. Yeah, I just know what it, it exists. I, I don't know. I don't know if I've seen it in videos or what. Um, but speaking of electric, though, you know, back in the day, in the, in the tag era, you know, tag buffering was shit. You know, like, moves drastically changed if you tag buffer them. And at least in the beta, it doesn't seem like a lot of moves had, like, their their properties change if you tag buffer them. That's something I was actually hoping for. Yeah, I, I was actually hoping for that, too. Because, you know, like, back in the day, and this is, this is like, one of the prime examples, you know, Jin's uh, tag buffered electric, it made it special name. So I mean, that that's crucial because the hitboxes grew bigger. You couldn't duck it, you know. And uh, you know, back, uh, Brian's back one that was another big one. Um, gave him more frames. Oh, it gave him way more frames. It was ridiculous. Uh, and for the most parts, I would say it gave him a better juggle too. Because I mean, if you paired him with say Bruce, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's getting. A, We're just using this at random. Yeah, just not random. Like people did that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you figure that's way more damage than he was getting by himself. So. Um, but, you know, that's going to be the name of the game. It looks like, you know, they're changing it. Uh, where It doesn't look like they're making real big drastic changes to characters. Um, they kind of want characters to keep their their old weaknesses. Um, I mean, there's some exceptions from what you've heard, you know, from what people have been saying and whatnot. But, you know, who, who knows how much that's going to change. But, uh, like, Eris, the example that he gives, uh, which uh, kind of made me laugh a little bit, he used uh, Fang and Dragonoff, because he's a Dragonoff player, like you are, Dan. Um, but he also plays Fang, Man. and he does not like Fang very much in T6. He thinks he's a really bad character, and uh, and I don't know. I mean, I'll use "bad" in quotes because I he didn't spe- he doesn't specify as at least not. maybe he meant Michael Jackson. Bad. Yeah, who knows? But but uh, he specifically says you know his biggest weakness is juggle damage for Fang, which uh, I can I agree and I disagree. I think with the the fucking uh, uh, tech trap. I think that evens it up a little bit, but it does create a scenario where he has to guess right again. So I'll give him that much. I mean, just if you're not using the tech trap, he does have really crap juggle damage. But um, so you pair him up with a character like Dragonov, who does really good juggle damage. Um, it just yeah. So it, it makes for a really really good tag combo. And you know, certain ta- uh, Fang moves. You know, like he has really good launchers. Like I have no idea how it's going to look, but you know, down four three. Who knows? Maybe you can tag out and juggle off of that, you know? Because if you can, oh. that's fucking busted. So, I mean, who who knows? But, like, tag buffers, ugh, I don't know. That's one of the most underrated launchers, too. Oh, it is. Well, you also have, you have to understand that, like, down four or three, it's really, really good. Um, you know, safe mid, uh, even tracks a little bit. Um, but it does have really short range. And yep. it, uh, you can't do the jab juggles on little characters. You have to just settle for your down four, 12. Um, and that's, I mean, that's still extra damage from a safe mid, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where Elisa can get away with, with getting hit by it, you know, all the stupid other down characters. I still just think that move is all around underrated. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Not enough people talk. Well, you know, I, I don't see people use it in tournaments and that is just super good. <laughs> well, my, my whole perception of Fang, like, I just think everybody thinks he's underrated, but, you know, that's just me, whatever. Um... But, uh, and you know, in going back to Tag 2, you know, we were talking about the Nage, uh, Netsu Rage thing. Um, those, as far as I, Rage do, is not in Tag 2. Uh, at least not in, in the same way or whatever. It's, it's back to just Netsu. Um, so who knows if they're gonna put Rage back into Tag 2. Um, I hope they don't. I hope they just keep the Netsu. Um, but from what it works, how it works in, uh, the current build that they have, I actually like it a, a lot. Because it, it doesn't, you know, in Tag 1, it depended on your character and like the team can affect who's Netsu and and how quickly they get Netsu and stuff. And now it just seems like it's it's uh, universal. Right? You know, it's the same across the board. It takes you know X number of hits. And uh, I hope they don't just totally uh, bland out the game that way with too much universal shit. I, 
I was one of the, I don't know, like the giant characters, you know, you could hit them with everything, and but they had bigger power bars, and some characters got faster than that, I don't. I hope they don't completely homogenize the game. Well, all of the characters have the same stamina, um, which is crucial. I mean, I, I understand, you know, it was kind of a balancing tool of tag, but it didn't really work. <laughs> it didn't tag at all. Um, cause the, I mean, you figure Ogre, I mean, why, first of all, why the hell did Devil Jin have the biggest life bar in the game? I have no idea. Oh, that one totally didn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, you know, it's like it didn't really make sense at all. And, you know, it kind of worked for some characters. Like for True Ogre, it worked a little bit. Um, but, you know, Jax, the Jax had really big life bars, but they weren't all that good. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I don't really like the stamina, but I do agree with you that, you know, you have to keep some of the unique flavor to the game. Um, so, I mean, they do have team-specific stuff. I know for sure they have team-specific grabs. Um because they actually showed that before they, they even came out with the beta. You know, they had a King, Armor King doing tag combos and stuff. So we know we know those are there. Um, I'm sure there's certain juggles. I really hope Law Paul has. has oh, heard. they have to. You have to I'll be that. I'll be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> you. We need the All-American combo of some variety. And uh, apparently, um, speaking of, like, unique stuff, uh, you know, movement has never really been generic in any sort of Tekken, um, but I guess they mixed it up a little bit more in uh, Tag 2, because um, Eris was saying that uh, he didn't really feel any difference uh, or improved movement or anything like that um, from T6, but uh, I guess a couple other people were feeling movement changes, and then when they did their interview with Harada... Um, he said that they actually changed the movements for a bunch of characters, and they altered it. So, first of all, not everybody has the same movement, and they actually kind of nerfed and buffed certain uh, people. Like, and he, he, Good. Some of the characters, it made no fucking sense. Why do you have the giant side Yeah, well, and, you know, you I'm, know like I'm glad you brought that up, because he specifically says that Elisa, they toned down the, her backdash, and Devil Jin now has a bigger one which makes a lot more sense to me because DJ is the spacing character and Elisa is bullshit. So <laughs> she should not have a big bag. Hi, Slooch. <laughs> yeah, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> but that character is bullshit. Here's, here's what I want to see. Bob is a fat fucking character, and he needs to be a fat fucking character on the goddamn ground. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, and I'm pissed, and Harada, if you're listening, Bob needs to be a fat fucking character. He is. He, his whole storyline, his whole design, he's a fat fucking character. But King is a bigger character on the ground than he is. Armor King is a bigger character than he is. It's fucking ridiculous. Yes. Well, Bob is just a stupid character. And we talked about this when we did the podcast with him. He's a dumb character. Like, just nothing about him makes sense. Like, he's a, like I understand the story is that, you know, he's, he wants to, I don't know, balance, you know, fat and speed or whatever. But, uh... But he's not even a fat character. Yeah, he's not a fat character. He He's fast, but it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, I mean, uh, like, just his whole fucking move sense, it just, uh, it just bugs me. Like, it just, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> it just all feels like gimmick. If, he, if he's proud of his body or whatever the fuck <laughs> that stupid story is, he needs to still be a fat fucking character, especially if he's going to be as agile as he is. He still needs to be a fat fucking character. I, I, I am... It's not even just, like, the storyline or his design. I honestly feel that that character should be a fat character on the ground, too. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Nope. I uh, I absolutely agree. Um, oh, and one thing, uh, I don't know if you'll like this or not, but uh, Harada, in that interview, um, they mentioned the possibility of combo breakers being a tag, too. And so uh, I, I actually don't mind it 100%. Since you're not having a tag cancel and it's already a, an offense-oriented game, I actually like it. But he said specifically that, well, first of all, they're not 100% sure if they're going to make it into the final game or if, if you know, that uh, feature will make it into the final game. Um, but apparently they, they've already been messing with it, and it's in there. Uh, they just don't know if it's going to be in the final product. But the kind of combo breaker that they're looking at is it's like its own kind of, uh, I don't want to call it a bar or anything, but it's one of those things where you can only use once a match, kind of like an X-Factor, you know, where you can only use it once a match. Once you use it, it's gone. But uh, I think that's actually a really, really good idea. If it's, like, once, I don't know. It, and it's once a, a round is probably what it would be, but... No, it, it says a match. He says a match, not a round. That, that I'd be for. Yeah. Once a match is fine, yeah. but once a round would be just too fucking much. Yeah, because we like, I, I like to uh, um, 
rant and rave on Marvel as much as I possibly fucking can. And the biggest piece of shit about that, about X Factor, is the fact that you don't have rounds. <laughs> you know, so if you use it once a match, it's possible that you could OCV their whole fucking team just because of X Factor. So I, I don't mind having a once per match combo breaker in tag or in Tekken in general because you have. That you know you have rounds, so if you waste it round one, well, even if you win that round, I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the match. So I like it. I like that idea. I I, I kind of hope that they put it in there because I'm I'm a fan of combo breakers, but uh, I grew up uh, with Killer Instinct. So <laughs> you know what would be badass actually is if that combo breaker only works on standing combos, like not in juggles. Mm, that, that would be pretty fucking awesome. You break their natural combo. That'd be interesting. I think it would be really useful for certain, um, like, counter-hit scenarios. Like, uh, let's say, for instance... Oh, that that is exactly what I'm thinking of. But yeah, I'm thinking like, stuff a, like, like a Fang 4 two, one, 2 Yeah, stuff that stagger stuns or whatever, yeah. That, I like that. I like A Mishima one one two. you just been hit with one one. Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, just, I just gave you a fucking, uh, like, I did a... A move that's 12 frame punishable on purpose. You will go for your, your multi hit 12 frame punisher, and I'm interrupting your ass and launching. Yeah, I think it would be a really, really, really cool new dynamic to the game. Because, yeah, th those kinds of baits would work, you know? Cause, that would be clever. Yeah, especially, especially in Tekken, where, you know, everyone is a frame whore. Everyone knows, okay, I use my 10, 12, 14 frame punisher here. You know, it's just kind of, it's, it's muscle memory. It gets to a point where it's, that's all it is. You, you see that move and you automatically punish it with, you know, X move, you know. So, that, that would be. People really are frame wars. It's my biggest problem with the community. And frame wars are so easy to beat. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, you know, kind of, I, that's all really I wanted to talk about for tag two, but, uh, the frame war thing is kind of funny because, um, I, I recent, I just this week went out and picked up Mortal Kombat. And uh, I like the game. I actually, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I think it's the game that Marvel should have been. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun with it and whatever. And there's a guy who, who I work with who, uh, he's not really a gamer or anything, real quiet guy, but he plays Mortal Kombat, he loves it. And he's pretty decent at it. Um, but, he, you know, he has no concept of frames or I should attack here, I shouldn't attack here. And when I was playing him last night, you know, it got to the point where, if I wanted to beat him, I really could, but I was trying to, you know, develop mechanic Other skills. Yeah, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not used to Mortal Kombat. I, I don't exactly know how the game works yet. You know, I'm still figuring it out, learning stuff every time I play. So I was just trying to do that. But uh, I, I'm a, I'm definitely going to be a tier whore in uh, Mortal Kombat, so I play Kung Lao until uh, somebody else starts beating ass with another character, and then I'll switch to that character. But, um... You know, I'm playing Kung Lao. I would I would have started with uh, Noob Saibot just because uh, the, you know, <laughs> creator's named after him by default. <laughs> That's my dude. Oh, I but I do know that Boone always loves fucking Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion seems pretty good, but um, I, I mean, my, my buddy, awesome. uh, my buddy was the one that I'm, I was just talking about. He plays Scorpion, and uh, Scorpion has really really good juggles um, and combos, um, but he seems really really unsafe. But, uh, I mean, maybe that's just me playing against him, but uh, even when I'm watching other people, like, Scorpion is really good, you know, um, but he seems like he can just get punished so easy. And that's, but that's one of the reasons that Kung Lao is so good, you know, like, he just, he keeps the pressure on, and you can hit confirm any of his strings and then go into the spin for a juggle and shit, like, he's just retarded. And then this entire time, while you're trying to fend off this, this pressure, he's doing card damage to you. You know, it's just kind of silly, but... Can you still infinite spin? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't know what the scenario would be. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> after, that, after that busted shit was uh, yeah. figured out, I'm sure they <laughs> stopped it. But I, that's just how I think of Kung Lao as infinite spin launcher. I'm probably going to pick up, um, uh, not Cybot, but uh, Cabal, because uh, he looks fucking cool. And he looks uh, he looks kind of kind of busted and good. Because so, he has like his own version. Because uh, you know, Kung Lao has the, the low hat throw. And uh, mm -hmm. he, Cabal has kind of the same thing with his fucking, uh, his... Uh, Bustle? Whatever, whatever the fuck you want to call those. They're like, um, they're not axes, but hooks or whatever the fuck. 
Um, Hook swords? Yeah, and he's got, you know, the run and shit, and the run's pretty busted, you know, gives free combo, it hits you in the air and shit, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So I think I might pick up him, see how good he is. But, you know, just for those kids out there who, uh, you know, you're kind of waiting, and, you know, T6 is dying down, and you're waiting for Tag 2 to come out, Mortal Kombat's not a bad option. That's pretty much the reason I picked it up, is because I need something else to play, and it translates really well. Like, because uh, the the combo system is very similar to, uh, it's like it's like a, a breed, a half breed between Marvel and Tekken, because you have juggle instances where the character floats, but you at the same time you have juggle strings or combo strings that when dial a combo yeah, they call it. Yep, you have the dial a combo that leads to a juggler juggle starter, and then you do an actual juggle. So it's it's kind of a you know a half breed, and you know there's some busted ass juggles out there, and I understand that the combos you know that do fifty plus percent or whatever. But for the most part, because there's combo breakers in the game, and you have all this other stuff, and most of the time, in order to get over 50%, you need to use an x-ray move or something. It's not nearly as busted as, as it looks at, at first glance. Plus, it works on rounds, so you don't have to worry about losing the entire match in one fucking combo. So, I don't know. I, I have a lot of fun with it. It's pretty, It's really easy to translate, or to pick up, you know. Movement and stuff translates pretty well. The only thing you have to get used to um, is the block button. But I played Caliber, so the block button doesn't bug me at all. I'm used to it. So, but, you know, so just a little, little uh, tidbit of advice okay. <laughs> for those who are uh, looking to try something new that isn't Marvel. Because that game is fucking ass. Do you still have to spend a billion hours in conquest mode unlocking every fucking <laughs> belt buckle and stupid ass fucking uh, iron on I don't know item? Um, yes and no. For uh, for items, I have no fucking clue. Um, I don't I don't fuck with that. I only care about playing versus, and so I haven't really messed with anything else. Um, you start out the game, and as far as I know, there's only two unlocked characters: Quan Chi and then Cyber Sub. And both of them, you, you do have to go through the fucking story mode or whatever to get. However, um, I had a friend when we played the other night, um, King Fan, for those who know him on TZ. Uh, he doesn't post too much anymore, but he's been a... He's OG gangster pimp. Super OG. Um, but he's a huge Mortal Kombat play, fan, been playing it forever. And uh, he came over and played a little bit the other night. And, uh, he just put all this save data onto a flash drive and then put it on uh, my PS3. Um, or I should say the girlfriend, whatever, I don't have. But anyway... The, uh, when he, <laughs> yeah, I don't own systems, sorry. But, uh, Thanks, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but when he brought it over, like, I don't, it says something, like, so it gives you some warning when it loads that says, you know, this info belongs to another user, blah, 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 blah. I don't play online, so I don't give a fuck. But, uh, you know, it was a pretty, it was a really easy, simple, quick fix, uh, to unlock the characters. So, if you're just looking to play at home, uh, Do you have to go through, like, the giant ladder to unlock somebody? I don't know. Uh, because <laughs> the story mode, like, I was just waiting um, for my buddy to come over the other night. Uh, and I was just chilling there, just waiting for him to get there. And I turned on story mode. And I was like, okay, I'll see what this shit is. Um, and it's like a movie. <laughs> it, you pl- it, like, plays a fucking 10-minute cutscene. Then you play a match. Then it plays another 10-minute cutscene. And it's just like, I was like, what a uh, ick, ew, get this away. I don't... Is Mortal Kombat mythology? Yeah. Is that what it and is? And what's oh. really dumb about that bullshit is that you can't skip cutscenes. Like, what the fuck? I can't skip a 20-minute cutscene? Why? <laughs> Why can I not skip that? Any any fighting game developers out there, whatever, just quit with the conquest mode. That's all I'm saying. No, I don't. I don't mind those modes being there, but quit making us have to do it to unlock characters. Yeah, you need you need these 15 characters in Soul Calibur three. Here, play fucking 40 hours of the worst fucking. I'm so bad. <laughs> ever. Fucking Tekken, stop doing that shit. Uh, I don't think Street Fighter does it, do they? I, I think that you have all the characters to start. I believe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. I, I thought. I, I just, thought. I just hate that shit more than life. Yeah, I uh, thought they stopped doing it too, but maybe I'm wrong. But you know, Tekken stopped doing it first. <laughs> <laughs> <So> whatever. <laughs> but uh, not a moment too soon. Yeah. Play, being forced to play Tekken Force mode, <laughs> the devil within to get Devil Jin. I mean, I guess Tekken at least always had. Um, 
a better system than other fighters because you could just sit there and play versus and eventually the characters would unlock themselves. Um, so you could always do that. But, um, yeah, stop making us unlock characters. Just fucking give it to us. Ugh, so annoying. <laughs> That's actually probably one of the reasons I hate Soul Calibur is just because they made me do that shit. <laughs> Defeat Rock at 500% life, and your weapon is draining your life, and yes. you have, every time you get knocked down, your character fucking explodes, and you have to do this <laughs> in 10 seconds. And yeah. And you have to hit start as soon as Dan Toasty Forden pops onto the fucking screen. And oh, man. <laughs> boom shakalaka. Oh, uh, I love it. Fucking only use left <laughs> kick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it, it's really stupid. I don't know why they fucking did that bullshit, but whatever. At least we play a game that they don't make you do that shit anymore. So <laughs> that's that's all I like. And you know, Mortal Kombat isn't too bad. Like I said, of the I want to say there's like fucking thirty five characters or some bullshit like that, and only two are unlocked. So you know, it's a pretty decent deal. I mean, it sucks if you play those two characters, but. <laughs> If you don't, you know, it's not a huge deal. And like I said, it's got a really uh, really quick fix, you know, if you don't plan on playing online. So, so if you're there just for the competitive sake of it. I'm still throwing it out there. It's a fun game. Um, I'm having fun with it. So All I know is they better, every time you fucking kill someone in that game, there better be 30 fucking rib cages in it. And I want every single hit of that fucking game to make the other guy go, Ugh! <laughs> I want to be at a tournament and just hear that noise constantly. Oh, man. I don't think they do those noises anymore, but they got plenty of fucking... I mean, they've definitely mm-hmm. upped the gore, that's for sure. Because uh, <laughs> I, I don't know of another game where when your characters get beat on, like, they seriously get beat on and bloodied and shit. Like, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> they should just add, like, not just for fatalities. I want to see someone get uppercutted and their fucking rib cage flies out. <laughs> well, you know, they do, they do have the x-ray moves, you know. So you, you got those, because those are pretty fucking harsh. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And, you know, fatalities are still there, so. You know, we were actually... <laughs> I want to kick the guy and his fucking leg falls off or whatever. <laughs> But then when he gets up off the ground, he still has both legs. I, I love the fucking nonsensical part of that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what's kind of crazy is, like, you have this x-ray move where they fucking crush your ribs and breaks your neck, but you still get up and start beating on them, whatever. What was, uh, wasn't there a, a game on PlayStation, like Bushido Blade or whatever, that's, like, you got hit or something on an arm with a weapon and, like, you couldn't use that, that limb? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there was even that Time Killers game back in the day where you could actually cut off fucking limbs or whatever. If you cut off their head, it was round over. Oh, my God. I fucking remember that game. That game. Like, why do I have a head button (laughs) just in case all my other limbs are fucking cut off? And they had special fatalities and shit you could only do if they had one leg, one arm. and. (laughs) Oh, my God. That game was amazing. I'm so glad you mentioned it. (laughs) Holy fuck. Yes. Oh. Like, one of the original gore games, you know? Oh, my God, too fuck. Mortal Kombat, what did you start? I know, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, that's all I got. Um, unfortunately, uh, no low parry combos from women. I totally forgot. Again, I always no. forget that shit. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well. well. We'll get to it. We'll get it next time. It's one of those things where, I, like, I keep, rem- you know, um, like... I write a note or whatever, or I take a mental note, and I'm like, okay, low parry combos from women. When our whoever our guest is, we'll make them do it. You know, whoever the female around them is, we're gonna have them do it. And uh, you know, I thought we would have Steph on, but uh, oh. didn't. So it kind of no low parry combo. PM her. <laughs> Happy. Sushi, where's our low parry combo? You know what? We should just call her. Never <laughs> fucking do it real quick. But uh, I think she's, like, in bed or some shit. So, um, so we don't have a low-pair combo, unfortunately. Um, oh, God. we got to do a sound-off. Who, who who wants to do it? You got one, Dan? <laughs> Anybody? 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, cause I, I, you know, I, we always make the guests do it, so I completely forgot if it's your turn or my turn. Uh, I think it's still your turn. Is it my turn? Oh, God. But, uh, <laughs> I never, like, have anything good. To rant on, you know? 
Um, okay, you know what? I got one. Um, <laughs> we're we're having a big tournament here in September, and uh, for those who uh, play Tekken and have played Tekken for a while, maybe you've heard of it. It's a newer version of Extravaganzas. Um, and we're changing it up a little bit because uh, King Fan is kind of retired from that. Uh, but the link is, you know, it's up, it's announced, it's a fucking sticky on the tournament announcement thread uh, at, on TZ. It's up on SRK. Um, we want it to be super huge. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff, free giveaway stuff. But it's been, a, I mean, I granted, it's a, it's a few months away, and I understand this, but no one has fucking registered. Come on, people. Seriously. It's fucking ten bucks plus like however many games like that. And you know you're gonna show up. I know exactly. <laughs> and I tried to. Ma- I'm trying to make it, you know, like incentive for people. Like you know, I know Evo's coming up, whatever. But uh, I mean, I I don't even care if you enter more games later, you know, down the line. Um, so these Iowa tournaments are always huge. There's always lots of awesome fucking parties and lots of awesome <laughs> shit going on at these things. Yeah. Might as well sign up in advance. Don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't want to fucking don't. process for shit late. It's like sending in your taxes on April fucking 15th. You're such an <laughs> asshole. Yeah, <laughs> you know the fucking IRS is sitting there like fucking sending letters to Santa about your fucking shit. <laughs> Absolutely. This guy, here you go. <laughs> yeah, and come on. I mean, seriously. Oh, and that's one thing that I should mention, because I, I think a lot of people like to, I don't know, brush us off or kind of ignore Iowa. Even if we don't have a huge scene here, which actually we, we at least the 2D scene is really growing uh, here recently. Um, but even if we don't have the biggest scene here in Iowa, we throw badass majors. I'm just going to throw that out there. We have a good fucking time. We run sh- and a good reputation for this. Good reputation. Fucking agree. We uh we run our shit well. Um, you know, you're not gonna please everybody. So depending on who you talk to, maybe there's that one person. I don't know. I have not heard one person fucking bitch about Iowa tournaments, and if they did, I they were doing they were just trolling. Yeah, Fuck trolling, it. trolling, trolling. But um, aside, you know, I mean, we run our shit well, and we fucking do after parties and shit. We get fucking completely crazy. So, if you're fucking out there on West Coast, East Coast, whatever, I mean, get out to this. It's super cheap. The only big uh, expense you may have to incur is for a plane ticket. But, uh, seriously, fucking get into the Chicago thread. You know, drive with some of those kids. Because I know at least a couple of Chicago people are coming. So, just fly into O'Hare. You know, save yourself some fucking cash on the plane ticket. Because we do have an airport here. It's uh, going to be in Cedar Rapids, and it's very, very close to the venue. But I mean, every- there's so many hotels yeah. all together. People just walk from hotel to hotel to hotel to exactly. hotel. Exactly. Every single <laughs> accommod, and I put this in the announcement thread. Every single accommodation that you could possibly want from a venue is is we we got it. Like the seriously, the hotel. Not only are there fucking ten billion hotels right around the venue, but literally two building lots away, there's a Motel Six for forty bucks a night. That's the one that everybody stays yep. at. That's the rushdown. Order your tickets now <laughs> so that you can still get into the Motel 6. But other than that, there's a fucking ton of eateries around there. There's a gas station right there in case you want, uh, I don't know, if you need to get beer or something. But There's a reason these tournaments have been big for like fucking 20 yeah. years. And, and the fucking area that we're having it in, uh, it's a hotel slash convention center, but they have multiple ballrooms. We are tucked in the fucking corner so we can make as much noise as we want. We have a big ass double door leading right outside to a niche parking lot that no one else uses. Fucking handicapped accessible, you know, fucking bathrooms right around the corner. There's a fucking bar slash kind of uh, lounge cafe restaurant thing that's right down the hallway. Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, St. Louis, fucking Chicago. These play these are the like, all in the area, they always show up, yep. and it's always fucking loud. You're yep. guaranteed to go to a loud fucking tournament. Yep, and, I, and we're trying to get this real big. Always. Like, I love me some King fan. I love Tyson to death, but he did not give a fuck about the 2D realm. He didn't at all. He was like, uh, sure. We still don't. Yeah. <laughs> so don't expect that to change. <laughs> but he's, uh, you know, he never promoted it on SRK or anything. He never tried to get the 2D kids out. He's like, okay, we'll play that game, but I'm not fucking announcing it over there. Which is totally cool. I'm, you know, hardcore stuck to his guns. I'm all about that. But we, you know, we're trying to get this fucking huge. We want hype. So we're uh, we're promoting it on SRK and everything. So 
We already have one uh, sponsor slash partner going on. We're going to give away some free shit, you know. So people need to come out, <laughs> you know. And uh, I really want this to be fucking big because uh, I love majors. Um, we need more Midwest majors. And Iowa, you know, like you said, Dan, we're, we're in the perfect spot. I mean, we are equidistant from, like, six big metropolitan areas. So if you're from the east, west coast, I mean, expect all those kids to be there. You know, people carpool the fuck around. And, you know, especially with Midwest, you know, we have a problem traveling because we have to drive so fucking far. So this is one of those rare instances where you don't have to fly all the way to Chicago if you're, you know, you're in uh, Kansas City or something. You know, those kids are just as close as everybody else. So, I mean, you see a lot of players uh, out that you normally don't. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But, yeah, I just wanted to sound off on that because I haven't, there's, there hasn't been real hype. People seem to be ignoring it, and you shouldn't. You need to fucking get in that thread. Fucking pre-register, fucking get hype. Cause Don't we're, be a dick. Yeah, we're going to get hype. We're going to get fucking crazy for this tournament. It's going to be lots of fucking fun. So is that is that your rant? That's my rant. You're all sounded off? I'm all sounded off. All right. Now, don't don't quote me for sure on this, but I think you've done the last four in a row out of us. Oh, my, you. <laughs> you keep asking, and I'm like, yeah, it's still you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what? Just for that, I keep laughing about it every single time. You know time. what? Ju- just just for that, uh, it's your turn. Go. We're doing a double sound off. It's your turn. Uh, you need to go. Uh, I'm good. I, I ranted about something earlier, and I don't have anything else in me now. Well, what did you rant about? I didn't fucking catch this. Where was I? I don't remember. It was halfway through the. Oh podcast. yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna write down. I'm gonna make a note. Even if we you have better. a guest, you're gonna do the next fucking sound off. Uh, you can get me on our next one, but I, I think that's fucking hilarious. You keep asking, is it my turn? Yeah, yeah, it's fucking my turn. <laughs> kidding. I need to write this shit down. But, you know, we're, that's how we do it here on the fucking Strat Corner podcast. We just fucking wing it. We do what the fuck we want to do. But uh, that's all I got. Um, we made it a long-ass time for just you and me and no guests. Um, so I'll, I'll take it. I, I figured this was going to be a super short podcast, but it uh, did not turn out that way. We got some... It's got some good talks in, so I like it. Um, so yeah, anything, any final notes you wanna, you wanna? No, nope, no. Nope. Love you, kids. I pick on you, but much love. Oh, and uh, before I officially uh, put an end to the podcast, I do want to say that we uh, we got some good guests coming up. Don't worry. Um, we, uh, I'm trying my hardest to uh, schedule people so that it's not just Dan and I. I know you love us, but we love having guests on. We know you love the guests, so. Uh, don't worry, I do have some people out there. I can even endorse that. Yes. Yeah, we've got good guests coming. We, we do have good guests coming. Um, also, uh, I tried. I think I mentioned this. Uh, you know, we were trying to get a lot of the more, um, the more higher tier characters. You know, out of the way first, the ones that you see more often. Um, and uh, I've had a couple requests for Brian. Don't worry, he's coming up. Uh, I wanted to get a good guest for him, so uh, get get pumped for that. Uh, he's going to be coming up here soon. Um, so yeah, yeah, just fucking get hype. Uh, people, uh, we love our podcast. More and more people are listening each week, so I'm digging it. Uh, we're pleasing somebody out there, Dan. We're pleasing somebody. That's how I That's do it. That's all that matters. Oh, and uh, extends. We've got extends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that we can get that on a fucking button or a shirt or something here soon. So <laughs> start selling that to people. Uh, Fuck yeah. Get your fucking extend Strat Corner podcast. We're going to have to like. Go back through the podcast and get like super awesome quotes and shit from people. It'll be <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all we got. Uh, we hope you learned a little bit something about Devil Jim. Hope we uh, covered him pretty good. Uh, we also uh, hope we gave you some uh, juicy tidbits for Tag Two if you're not uh, out there uh, scouring for uh, information. Um, and other than that, yeah, we've had a blast. So uh, tune in next time. We will see you guys later. Bye.